Yes, ma'am. There's a fair amount of parking space at the church. You, know, you, you think about what we have at Town Hall and what we have at the uh, at the high school. The high school's got a lot of parking, but during election time, there's only a small area that's reserved for voting. The rest of it is filled up with either staff or student parking. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. You could do. We'll let Greg know when you want to come back and we'll put that on. Either our next meeting. Next meeting. Yeah, that's yeah. Our next meeting. Next meeting is uh, June first. What? June first. June first. That's right. Before town meeting. Very good. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay. We have uh, the audit report. Mr. Hingston. Mr. Tassoni, are you participating or sitting there? <laughs> Uh, why don't you pull up a chair rather than uh, I, sure? I have here. I hurt your back with those heavy chairs. No, she doesn't want to look. <laughs> we're kind of we're kind of thrifty, so they hand me down. You turn that microphone. Uh, that's hand me down. Okay. Tell us how you responded to all these things. <laughs> yeah. I got a big chair. <laughs> I know we didn't have We're going to uh, start with the letter. Yeah, if that's okay. okay sure. Uh, first, thanks a lot for letting me do the audit again. Um, I think these work better if there's conversation, so please feel free to ask questions or comment or disagree. <laughs> um, disagree. Huh? I'll agree. Um, the first comment has to do with your deposits. C right now, the, uh, the treasurer has a considerable amount of funds to invest, and although somewhat limited by statute, she still has to weigh the um, risk versus the yield. Right now, there's, um, FDIC covers your deposits for up to $250,000 per bank. Um, that's only through December 31st, 2009, at which time it will go back to $100,000 unless the law is extended. Um, the Certain depositories do have other insurances which can cover you in full. The savings banks have a fully insured and other ones purchase other insurances. During these turbulent economic times, I think it's especially important that the Treasurer make in her investments in, this, in sound financial institutions. And in order to ensure that, there's something called the Vera Bank Report that's out, and it rates, assesses banks based on a number of key financial uh, factors quarterly. So what we recommend is that she get that Vera Bank report. A number of mass treasurers do. It's only about $150 for a year, or $120 for a year. And, and to review them, they color code the, the rating. So green four star is the highest rating, and then it goes down to, uh, I think, yellow. And if you go to their website, it shows you how many banks have failed in their various ca rating categories. And, if you go to their top, if you have your money invested in their top rated banks, I think only three have failed in 20 years. So I think it's, I think that in my opinion, the two worst things that can happen to a treasurer is, is one that someone in her office takes money, and the second is if, if a bank fails. And if I was selectman and one of my the banks failed and I, we lost some money, I'd ask the treasurer, you know, how could this happen? And they could say, well, I don't know, we, I talked to other treasurers, I, I monitor the banks and I read the Wall Street Journal. Well, I probably still wouldn't think that they did a very good job. But if you had an investment policy that said, we're going to only invest at banks that have a green three-star rating or above, and if, if it falls below that, we're going to either collateralize it or move the money to another bank. And, and if the treasurer had, a, had done that for three years and then came to me and said, we still lost the money, I said, well, how did it happen? She said, well, I followed the policy. Every time we got out of the money out of the bank, I mean, when, every time a bank went below the rating, we moved the money or I collateralized it. It just happened. I mean, I think that I still, you still would have lost the money and I still wouldn't be happy, but I would have thought she did her due diligence. So I think it's important for, for her to develop 
uh, an investment policy and to bring it to you to make sure that your, uh, her risk tolerance is the same as your risk tolerance and that it's a, it's a town policy as far as what they can do with their investments. Right now, your investments are in pretty conservative investments, even your trust funds. Um, I'll get to that later, but whereas a lot, so a lot of the places I do, their investments were in stocks and bonds, their trust funds, they lost up to 40% over time. So I think you guys lost 4%. I think that's what we, 4%. So the, the conservative investment part really helped you in, in this juncture. So another time it might not have, but. So I think that if she brings an investment policy to you, I, I think I gave her a couple of samples as a, and um, for her to address, uh, to update and make it to more your liking, and then if you, you adopt it, um, and then make sure she abides by it. So that's if uh, two years ago you wouldn't be making the same recommendation or it wouldn't have been the same issue? Well. Two years ago, I probably should have made this recommendation, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't. Yes. Yeah, but um, probably, I, I, uh, but I didn't. <laughs> so yeah, this the answer is more, yes. This is more related to uh, uh, protecting yourself against a bank failure. Yes. Yeah. That's so. I, I really where, probably where wouldn't. the uh, you know hundred thousand dollar two hundred thousand I really think dollar limit. Uh, we certainly exceed. Right, but, but it is something that you really have to weigh because when you collateralize it instead of keeping it in a bank, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have any money that's not insured because <coughs> if you have it collateralized, you lose interest. So, I mean, because you'll lose a half a point of interest or so to, to get something collateralized. And if you lose a half a point of interest, that's earnings on investment that you lose and you may have to lay off a person to have your money fully insured. Cause, so, you know, it's, it's you have to, way how much risk you think there really is out there by having it in certain banks. Okay. Um, the next issue has to do with some unclaimed checks. These are just checks that have been outstanding for us for a, per for a pretty significant period of time um, in the payroll and vendor account. There, the reason that we put this in the management letter comment is because there is a fraud risk involved. And if I was the treasurer and I had a, a check that was outstanding for six months. I'm not sure whether somebody's going to come and cash it. It's already run through the system. All it is is a reconciling item on the bank statement. But if it's been outstanding for six years, I'm pretty sure that nobody's going to cash it. So since it's already out of the ledger and, I'm, I'm, and, and I reconcile the bank statements, if, if I void that check and made another check payable to myself, and I'm the one that opens the bank statement, there's a fairly good chance that nobody would know nobody would catch me on that so we think that a check should not be outstanding for more than a year once it's been outstanding for a year it should be rolled it, it should be rolled into an unclaimed checks account and after it's been in the unclaimed checks account for a year it should be brought back into the unreserved fund balance account um, there is the, there was an IGR from the state and instructional instructional guideline release that said um, anything over a hundred dollars when you put it into the unclaimed checks account, you have to um, notify the person by a letter to the last known address. And if it's over $100, it's a letter and it has to be published in a paper of general circulation. So that's, we just think that that's a good practice. Every June 30th, it goes, what's, what's outstanding for a year moves into unclaimed checks, what's in unclaimed checks moves into unreserved fund balance. Um, the next issue has to do with budget transfers. Uh, so with Back to you, Joe. This is being addressed now? Yes. So, yes, everything that he has is being addressed. Well, he's talking about recommending a policy. I'm talking about dealing with the current unclaimed checks. What do we want? Uh, we're going we're gonna to follow this recommendation. We are going to try to find the owner of record, and if that doesn't work, move him into tailings, and then the year after that, close it out to have reserve for balance. Just a, looking at the uh, commission report that just came out, I think the current law is three years before you can consider the check abandoned. Is there a state law that says that? Is they, they're making a proposal on the, uh, the legislature, Special Commission of Municipal Relief. They actually have a provision here where they're looking to reduce it to one year 
the check is, isn't cashed, then it can be considered abandoned. And then you have to go through a process notifying whoever the payee is of the check. They indicate that the current law is three years before you can consider the check to be abandoned. Well, it's not uh, unclaimed. So that would be the third year. It would be outstanding for a year and unclaimed for a year. And then at the end of the next year, you oh. move it out. Out of unclaimed. Checks, checks aren't good. But yeah, they're only they're stale after six months. After six months. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't have the law in front of me. I'm just yeah. giving a little paragraph here that they provided <coughs> to us. So I yeah. just wanted to make sure we were in line with whatever the state law is. See, I'm surprised I didn't know that piece of law anyhow. What was that in the. They may not they, know. It. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> But it's in this yeah, I've been doing this for 20 years. It's so. the first time I've heard that. Um, the next issue has to do with budget transfers. At the at the annual and special town mi meetings, um, you the uh, taxpayers approve authorizations and the funding source. Some of the funding sources require transfer out of other funds to move in from from available funds and into the general fund. Um, during and they require a journal entry to follow, the budget and a journal entry. We noticed that two of the entries weren't made in fiscal year 2008. Um, after we noticed them, they made them, Joe made the entries in 2009. We made them for financial statements. So, so you know, some of these entries, there's nothing to trigger them. So we gave Joe a set of budget entries that we think he should make when the recap sheet comes out, and that will trigger to make sure all the journal entries, part of the budget entries, we'll be posting the recap, and there'll be an estimated transfer in as a funding source. And when he compares the estimated transfers in to the actuals, if there's a variance, then it'll trigger Give an me entry. An example. Um, what was it? The um, uh, example of what the, the spreadsheet. What was the special revenue fund one? Cell tower. The cell tower. Yeah. Cell tower. The cell tower. Uh, was voted as an available fund to fund something in the general fund, mm -hmm. and the money wasn't transferred out of the cell tower account into the general fund. Oh, okay. So that would um, that'll be a bump on your free cash next year because you didn't get part of your free cash this year. On the other hand, your cell tower will go down. The cell tower fund is less than. No, but is more. It's more. It's more now. It's but actually that's a good thing. It, <laughs> it, it actually it's is a good thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a good move, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we want to, sure we want to fix it. <laughs> Which I understand the issue. Mr. Dickwood, are you just suggesting a tickler file as far as any, well, any, is that any funds that have been uh, appropriated or set up, established by right Tommy, you're going to have a, a long running? Well, no, you, no, you know what, there is, when, when you, once you get the recap approved, <coughs> there's a series of journal entries, budget entries that you can make. So when you post the recap, everything on the recap that's an available fund will show up, that's coming into the general fund, will show up as an estimated transfer in. It's just, and when you make the entries, they have to balance. When you, the, the recap sheet's balanced by fund. So when you make these budget entries, it'll be, show what your local estimated receipts were, and it'll be an <laughs> estimated revenue, and there'll be an estimated transfer in, and there'll What's be a- What's happening now, where, where, if you didn't do that? There were no budgetary entries, to, to the big picture budgetary so entries. The, Right, you're right. There was nothing to, no offset. There was no estimated transfer in. So I guess my point is, what is it that we're, we're establishing here, basically, that would force us to do things any differently? These just uh, posting to budget it. entries from the recap sheet. So the, the recap sheet, like, say the recap sheet has a $50 million budget. Then you'd put, and $20 million of it was from, uh, 20 when it was from property tax, you'd put estimated revenues, $20 million, and another $10 million was from, another $40 million was 45, 25 million was from cherry sheet and other local receipts, debit estimated receipts, 25 uh, million, and then your debit estimated transfer is in, $5 million. And then appropriations, 50 million. So that entry would balance. And then when he starts looking at things, he looks at his estimated revenues compared to his actual, and you look at your estimated transfers in compared to your actual. And if, at, if the, after he posts all his journal entries making the transfer, if they don't, the transfer is in, don't equal the estimated ones for the recap sheet. Then you'll say, oh, I must have missed something. Uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> um, the next one has to do with the trust funds. The town has historically um, recorded its trust funds at um, cost basis. Generally accepted accounting principles say they should be at market value. The reason they did it, they thought it was more cons 